Hi, I'm Amy from Select Travel Holidays. Thank you for joining our virtual touring and destinations festival. For many people, Africa is uh, the big five, or they might think of the annual great migration. Uh, but there's incredible diversity um, on this continent, uh, from the Namib Desert and sand dunes, the thundering waterfalls, most famously uh, Victoria Falls, uh, the lush um, wetlands of the Okavanga Delta in Botswana, uh, the Great Lakes, particularly in Kenya and Tanzania, um, and lush forests, which are home, of course, to gorillas and chimpanzees and other primates. Um, I mean, I think for many people, gorilla trekking is one of those um, big uh, bucket list items. Um, I certainly know it's on mine. Um, but of course, Africa is also home to uh, many different people and cultures. And um, it's an incredibly vibrant and beautiful um, continent. Um, and Rainbow Tours were founded in 1997 because uh, Roger Diski um, wanted to show that Africa was a place that you could really fall in love with like he did. Since then, um, Rainbow Tours has remained committed to um, crafting unique, immersive, um, tailor-made um, or group tours that um, actively benefited the local people but also protected the um, wildlife too. Um, they've since extended their destination focus to Latin America, but the same principles remain at their core. Um, today, they work closely with respected charities and NGOs and are um, deeply committed to animal um, welfare. So you can always be sure that you're traveling responsibly when you're on a tour or home made holiday with Rainbow Tours. The team at Rainbow Tours have been handpicked for their extensive specialist knowledge um, on their destinations. And Helen, um, who will be giving us um, our presentation on uh, Madagascar, is no exception. As Rainbow Tours are the UK's leading tour operator to Madagascar, she's um, going to give us the benefit of her specialist knowledge um, to give us an overview on Madagascar uh, with must-see destinations and experiences uh, for any first-timer. So this presentation, it's um, really sort of um, zooming in on a very particular country rather than the whole continent of Africa. So, um, so it's a lot more focused and um, actually I think it's I think it's great that we're um, focusing on a destination that's perhaps um, not the most obvious when you think of Afri Africa because of course it's not part of the mainland continent, it's, um, it's hundreds of miles um, off the east coast in the gorgeous Indian Ocean but it's also got so many of its own, um, obviously I mean, it's famous for its lemurs of course and chameleons, it's got um, such unique wildlife and um, you know flora as well and um, it's got its own unique experiences that um, you know make it um, well worth visiting in its own right and uh, something completely different and distinct and uh, so it's great to have a little bit of spotlight on uh, Madagascar because that's perhaps a little bit more off the beaten path and uh, it's always great to have a look at alternative destinations so um, I hope you enjoy our presentation with Rainbow Tours. Hi there, my name is Helen and I am a Madagascar specialist at Rainbow Tours. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly for a few minutes, just an overview of Madagascar in general, how to get there, how to get around, what there is to see and do, etc. Um, but just to briefly say who I am, I suppose, uh, to start with. So um, my name is Helen. I've been at Madagascar. I've been a Madagascar specialist for about five years at Rainbow. Um, my background prior to that is a mixture of travel and wildlife, so I've worked for specialist wildlife tour operators, um, I've been a zookeeper working with primates in a couple of major UK zoos, um, I've been a researcher out in the field in Madagascar down in the south working for charities, um, and obviously I've been to Madagascar several times myself. Um, normally I go to Madagascar for about a month at a time, um, but it's a massive country, I always go to different areas. Um, and there's so much to see and do, it's so varied. So as a general overview, if you think of Madagascar, it's about three times the size of the UK, um, but there's very few roads. So one I'm gonna talk about is this one, from the capital down to the southwest coast, which is known as Route National 7, the RN7. Um, there is another one here and one further north, but really there's a handful of tarred roads in the whole country. So given the size, it's very difficult to get around. 
pretty much all trips to Madagascar will involve internal flights, which I would say are not the most frequent or reliable. Um, so on the face of it, you could look at a map and think, I've got two weeks, I'll go here, 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 here. But actually, all flights start and finish in the capital. So, and you need to have a night there in between flights. So from Tana, you might fly to north and then back, then to the south and then back and, and various and so on. And you can see how your nights really get eaten up with a two week itinerary, just getting from A to B. Um, and they're not always daily flights and you wouldn't fly somewhere just for a couple of nights either. So it's um, a lot of traveling, but um, it's a big country and very varied. Um, so we'll start off with what most people do on a first time visit. So fly into Antananarivo, also known as Tana. And from there, the RN7 route heads down through places like Ansarabi, which is about three hours south, down to places like Ranafana, so a very well known rainforest reserve. Um, you always see the pictures of the river running through it, there's a lot of water, very lush. Um, heading further south, Ranafana is probably best known for um, species like bamboo lemurs. Heading south from there, along the RN7, you're coming down to places like Anja where you can see ring-tailed lemurs, so pretty much everyone stops there en route. And then you're really seeing the scenery change as you come down from the highlands. So you've gone through rainforests, into mountains, and then heading into deserts, really, as you get further west. So places like Isalo, which is much more um, like canyonlands. So there is wildlife there, you'll certainly see species of lemur, but it is much more about the desert-adapted plants, like the elephant's foot, it's more about the hiking and the trails and the scenery, um, little um, natural watering holes. Um, so interesting landscape, but much more desert-like. And I think a lot of people associate Madagascar with rainforest rather than desert. So very different site in Madagascar. And then you're going through places like Zumbitsi, which is much more of a transitional area. So as you're coming down towards the coast, you've got a lot of very weird and wonderful species there that wouldn't exist anywhere else. And then you're heading down from there to the coast, to the end of the road, to Tulia. And a lot of people will either fly straight back from there, back to the capital, which is daily flight. Or you could extend your time and have some beach and do a bit of snorkeling. And there's lots of little guest house and B&B style places there. So it's a nice place for two or three days, I'd say. So that's your typical first timers two week trip through Madagascar. And we have an example itinerary on our website, which is much more detailed. I've covered that very quickly. But it gives you an idea of the sort of properties we would use in all of those places, what there is to see and do in each of the reserves and how long you need and so on. I should add, we all, pretty much every client goes to Andesibe, which is an easy thing to fit at the start or end of any trip. It's about a four hour drive from the capital to Andesibe, which gives you an idea of scale on this map. So that's about four hours on a good car drive. Um, and because you're not reliant on any internal flights there, it's very easy to pick that, put that maybe at the end of a trip where you don't need to worry about not getting back for your international flight home. Um, almost everyone goes to Andes Sea Bay. It's the easy and most accessible reserve there is. There are other areas of pristine rainforest further north, like, Mas um, like Maswara Peninsula. Um, but access up there is by charter flight and obviously it's a bit more involved to get up there. So that's a very general overview. Um, the other area I'd sometimes suggest to a first time was the far north. So there's an internal flight up to Diego Suarez, and then you can work your way down towards Nosy Bay, which does have an airport as well. And you can easily do that over about 10 days. Again, we have an itinerary on our website which talks about zingy rainforest and beach. So you've got a range of habitats there, typically three to four hour drives between places, so a bit more manageable. And because Nosy Bay is an island in an archipelago with some great beaches and world famous snorkeling and diving, it's quite an easy place to finish a trip, um, particularly for honeymoons and then couples. It's nice to have a beach element to finish with. So that's quite an easy option. Um, and I would say if you do finish in Nosy Bay, it's worth us looking at international flight options out of Nosy Bay as well. There are now a couple of routes opening up. So you've got Ethiopian Airlines a couple of times a week and South African Airlines once a week on a Sunday to Joburg. So potentially it's possible to depart from Nosy Bay or arrive there. But in the vast majority of cases, you pretty much always fly in and out of Tama, the capital. Um, other areas to mention, if clients are interested in beaches, you've got Andajavi on the, on the west coast, northwest coast, which is a flying destination. Again, accessed by charter flight only. There's no roads that go there. And that's one of the best hotels in the country. 
it's a Relay Chateau property, so five star. And if clients just want a really simple trip, maybe and a sea bay, so they get an element of wildlife and then go up to Antijavi, that's again a nice two week trip. I personally probably wouldn't do less than about two weeks in Madagascar just because of the size and the time it takes to get around. Um, but if clients have got less and they're going somewhere that's not as reliant on internal flights, but maybe charters, then yeah, there's definitely, definitely options we can look at along those lines. If they do want a bit more luxury, um, the other one I would mention is a combination of Mandrari, which is a tented camp down in the south, and Manafi Afi on the east coast, um, which are purpose-built luxury tented camps um, or hut, hut camps. They're much higher standard, I would say, and because of the private charters to fly in and do a circuit, it's an efficient use of time. Um, and the clients are less budget conscious potentially and want a higher standard of accommodation and something that's more on a par with what you might get in East Africa. I would say that's a good combination to look at um, and can be combined with Andesiba, of course, at the start end as well. Um, so that's a very quick overview that gives you an idea of the sort of destinations that you might want to look at. In terms of us as a tour operator, we do private tailor-made trips. We also operate group tours in the high season only. So high season is September, October, November. Um, we do the, the RN7 route as either a private trip or a tailor-made, uh, or a, a group tour, sorry. So you've got options of both. They pretty much sell out every year. We've never had any issues with the group tours at all. We do also offer some special one-off departures, usually in the high season, October, November, with people like Daniel Austin, who's the author of the Brat Guide to Madagascar. Um, so look on our website, you'll see all the latest departure dates and uh, information on there. Um, if they're looking for something tailor-made, particularly on the RN7 route, I would say it's often very similar price as it would be for a group tour. So don't be afraid of necessarily looking at something private um, because it's such a big country. It's quite easy for us to tailor-make something very specifically for them. Um, and clients will often have an idea in their mind of, they want to see a particular species or they want to spend more time in a certain area. So all of those things we can certainly do for you. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of what we are as a company and what we do and the areas of the country. Um, as I said, our website's got a lot more details. So um, if clients do ask for anything specific, just give us a call. But there are some example itineraries on our website to give you an idea of what's possible in two weeks. And um, hope that's helpful. Any questions, let us know. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that presentation. It's always great to have the benefit of someone with really ex you know, extensive specialist knowledge who's really sort of have been there and they know the destination really well and obviously really passionate about it. And um, so thanks to Helen for that presentation and also thank you at home for watching. So if you'd like to find out more about traveling to Madagascar or Africa, um, or touring with Rainbow Tours, uh, then give us a call on 01234 326 778 or email us sales at cruiseselect.co.uk. Um, particularly if you're interested in um, going to Kenya, um, Bella actually grew up there so she's always happy to um, share her particular um, first-hand experiences and knowledge of uh, Kenya and other parts of Africa. So. Um, but of course, any of us can help you. So um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, take care and keep safe. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you.